Hello and welcome to this introduction video for the Ultimate Radial submenu. As since this asset is designed to be an add-on for the Ultimate Radial menu, it is very similar in workflow and reference. So since you already know how to use the Ultimate Radial menu, we'll just briefly go over how to get a submenu in your scene, some of the key differences that you'll find in the inspector, and then we'll really quickly show the new class that you will use in your own scripts to add buttons to the submenu. So to begin, let's show how to add a submenu into your scene. And just like with the radial menu, you can go to um, the prefabs and just click and drag it into the scene. And so we have an inverse radial menu in here. So I'm just going to drag out one of the prefabs and it will automatically parent itself to the radial menu in the scene um, and it can work off of that. So that's one way. That's the easiest way. We have a, a bunch of different prefabs that are made. Um, or if you wanted to create one from scratch, you can always do the UI ultimate radial submenu and it will do the same thing and you can generate them that way. So I'll use the inverse here. Um, so now we're going to show um, some of the key differences that you'll find in the inspector. Um, the positioning is a little bit different because it's based off of the radial menu. Um, so you have things like submenu distance. Um, you can change the angle per button um, and other things like that. There's some input settings um, like the invoke action and a couple other things like that. Um, deactivation range for if the input goes past a certain amount, it'll deactivate the submenu. Um, things like that. Um, in the submenu options, you'll have um, how you want the submenu to interact with the radial menu um, and a couple other options here like base image and end images. Um, those are pretty, pretty cool for this. Um, the button interaction section is basically the exact same as the radial menu. So you can choose if you want sprite swap, color change, um, everything else like that. And then the sub button list is where it's a little bit different um, because the sub menu is designed to be more of a dynamic menu where you're adding um, to the sub menu at runtime. Um, that's the default. So this section here is for dynamic. So you can see how it looks in different positions with different button numbers and stuff. Um, so you can test that. But we also did make it available for a static button setup, something to where you can actually um, add this many to this index here. Um, and you can reference um, specific buttons on here so you can set up a static menu, something that will be set up in the inspector and then work at runtime, um, but it's set up from the inspector in edit mode. So that's a little bit different there. Um, and that's basically all of the, the key differences um, that you'll find. Um, there's little bits in there, but um, it functions very, very similar. So the last thing we, we wanna show you is the um, new class that you'll use. So it is the ultimate radial sub button info class. And, and the only difference is really in the name um, because it still communicates with the menu, but it's with the sub menu instead of the main radial menu. So it had to be a different component. But um, all you'll have is a ultimate radial sub button info a variable inside of your scripts, and you'll provide that to the sub menu. So that's basically all the differences you'll find. It's um, designed to be very, very similar. So hopefully it really, really um, is something that adds to your project, makes it really, really easy to get a submenu working. So that's it for this video, and we'll catch you next time.